This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. There's a newly discovered similarity between Amelia Earhart and the castaway whose partial skeleton was found at Nicomoro in 1940, according to a release from the Earhart Project. The bones suspected by their discoverer of being Earhart's were dismissed by British authorities after a doctor judged them to be male. The bones were subsequently lost and the entire incident forgotten until the Earhart Project discovered the original British files in 1998. The file included the skeletal measurements the doctor made. An evaluation of those measurements by forensic anthropologists led to the conclusion that they were consistent with a female of Earhart's height and ethnic origin. That was 18 years ago. Recently, in preparing an updated evaluation of the bone measurements, one of the doctors noticed a peculiarity among the arm bones. The forearm was the proportionately longer bone of the arm. Statistically, women born in the late 19th century had an average radius to humerus ratio of 0.73. In other words, if the castaway was a middle-aged, ethnically European woman, she had forearms considerably longer than average. Researchers wondered if Emilia may have had similarly longer than average forearms. To answer that question, we called a forensic imaging specialist, Jeff Glickman. Selecting an historical photo of Amelia, where her bare arms were clearly visible, and working with Dr. Richard Jans to identify the correct points on the shoulder, elbow, and wrist for comparing bone length, Jeff found that Earhart's humerus to radius ratio was 0.76, virtually identical to the castaways. The match does not, of course, prove that the castaway was Amelia Earhart but it is a significant new data point that tips the scales further in that direction. Amelia was born in Atchison at her grandparents' home in 1897. She and her navigator disappeared while attempting to circle the globe in 1937. I'm Scott Thelman, and this is Juniper Hill Farms. Even though my parents weren't farmers, they bought this beautiful farm north of Lawrence in 1999. In 2010, I started growing vegetables on this land. Today, Juniper Hill Farm sells produce to wholesalers, grocers, and restaurants, and is focused on growing high-quality food that everyone can afford. Watch my story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer.